Good afternoon. It's an honor for me to address this economist conference here in my country, Malta. John, reading the Economist January 18th article on technology and jobs, I couldn't help noting with interest your reference to innovation as the elixir of progress, somewhat contrasted by its inevitable consequence, the shedding of many jobs, at least initially, eventually offset by the creation of new and better ones. And here lies the challenge for us, the policymakers. Since the start of industrialization, the cycle of disruptive innovation seems to have repeated itself every 30 to 40 years, usually coinciding with the commoditization of a major technological invention, such as railroad, railroads, oil refineries, telephones, and digital photography. The Internet Revolution, which started in the early, mid-1990s, is often suggested to be the biggest one of them all, or perhaps the one that has turned the world into a global village. Malta has not been immune to these changes on the landscape, even if historical, historically on the periphery of world, worldwide scientific and technological upheavals. However, the rate at which innovations in web technology are being spawned is so fast that they may be difficult to cope with if we are not sufficiently prepared as a country. We only have to think of how the cloud services, social media, mobile devices, and now the power of a new concept, big data, are creating new forms of monetization, new business models, and new trust patterns that are having a huge impact in the way we live, the way we work, and the way we conduct business. How fast can countries cope with the disruptive changes that this digital revolution is causing? Will our digital aliens eventually adapt themselves to the new digital jobs being created? And how can effective policies be designed to ensure that today's society is sufficiently prepared for so much rapid change? Until now, we can say that Malta has been successful in upskilling its human capital to cope with the changes that have occurred. We have notable successes to boast about, such as in the financial services, aircraft maintenance industry, the pharmaceutical industry, and the remote gaming industry. ICT is another success story that perhaps happened more in a silent manner. ICT contributes circa 6% of our GDP, employing approximately 3,500 professionals and specialists in 2013, which is basically equivalent to 3.5% of our gainfully employed population. Malta also performs rel relatively well on the EU digital agenda, attaining a good number of above average rankings and significant indicators such as broadband penetration, e-commerce, e-government, export of ICT goods and services, and small and medium enterprises selling online. However, this is surely not enough. In spite of Malta's strength and aptitude in information and communication technology and its growing role in our economy, take-up of ICT is not as wide and consistent as it should be. There still are many contrasts. It has been high in sectors such as banking, finance, insurance, and remote gaming, where investments were forthcoming, or in the services industries, where the economic benefits for business were evident, or among home users with the capability and financial means to do so. But there are still many areas where this mark take up, the smart take up of ICT is somewhat lacking. And perhaps where there is plenty room for more innovation and economic growth. These comprise areas affected by market failure, such as infrastructure management, energy efficiency, and public transport. ICT themed innovation in particular needs to be championed in a more concrete way by the public administration we as a government. 
If we want to give real value to citizens and businesses, we must take it, make it easy for them to interact with government by reducing bureaucracy, adopting the once only principle, and facilitate, facilitating the reuse of public data, which is not sensitive or confidential. Research has amply shown that it is that it is social and cultural conditioning, not cognitive differences between genders, that prompts less females to choose STEM subjects. It is therefore no longer justifiable that only one in three computing graduates in Malta is female. The country cannot afford to lose out on the creative capital that women can contribute to society. Our vision as a government is, is therefore that ICT is not just an infrastructure, it's not just an enabling tool. It is an empowering means through which every Maltese, irrespective of age, gender, education, ability, economic means, or race, should grow as a digital citizen with rights, responsibilities, and, abil and abilities to use ICT. If ICT is a smart driver of innovation in an enterprise business, ICT must equally be a smart means of empowering our citizens, improving their quality of life, their, their chances of success, their well-being, and their innovativeness in a world that is moving ever so fast. Malta's small and medium enterprises, too, will have a greater chance of success if powered by ICT. This goes well beyond just having a website or buying and selling online. SMEs must be encouraged and supported through special schemes to embrace the smart application of web technologies, to internationalize, innovate, and transform themselves into digital enterprises. As Mr. John Sigrek uh, just mentioned in the previous session, the world needs more action than words. The new digital Malta strategy for 2014-2020 that will be launched by the Prime Minister in the coming days will be therefore the start of an exciting journey for our country to attain this vision, Digital Malta. It is a strategy that has been built together with the stakeholders, including the private stakeholders, that will empower the economy and society by setting a vision that hopes to transport Malta, to transform Malta into a digital enabled nation. Importantly, it is not just a document which gives national policy direction. It is not just words. It includes a number of measures tackling various, various issues, such as the need to develop more online content, citizen engagement, support for startups, safer internet, cloud computing services, ICT innovation in public procurement, e-learning, digital by default legislation, next generation access <coughs> networks, and most importantly, ICT educational programs. Designed in the form of a framework, the strategy is above all pragmatic and factors in sufficient flexibility to allow us policymakers, business leaders, and entrepreneurs to take decisions in the knowledge that they will be supported by us policymakers. That is responsive responsive to the technological advances and challenges of the future. To conclude, we are doing this in the belief as a government that in a world where everything is changing so fast, by embedding an innovative mindset in everything we do, it gives us a long lasting competitive advantage that will also be of great benefit to anyone who wants to be part of this journey. A big thank you for your attention.